Welcome to Second Opinion, the review show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I am joined by Tanushri Buck so we can talk about the Google Pixel USB-C earbuds. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO68. Okay, so before we get into the proper review, let's talk a little bit about why these headphones even exist in the first place, because they're kind of a weird category of headphones. Um, So Google, in its vast wisdom, decided a a year and a half ago that, uh, oh, hey, you know, since Apple's not putting headphone jacks into their phones anymore. We don't need to do that either. It'll be totally fine. Nobody will care. So the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 3 uh, phones don't have headphone jacks. And, you know, of course, the thing that that Google and every other tech company is trying to push us towards is like Bluetooth earbuds, right? Fully wireless. But not everybody's going to be doing that. And so it was very important for Google to kind of have some product that they produce and sell that can serve as a wired headphones for the phones that they're selling, right? They, of course, also sell the USB-C to headphone jack adapter. And I think, I think, yeah, the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 3 both come with one of those adapters in the box. Um, but, you know, if, if you... If, want to go all in on USB-C and have some like wired headphones that plug into a USB-C port, there you go. Google definitely needs to provide that product. So how much is Google selling these for? They are 30 bucks each uh, in the in the Google store. Um, if you get a Pixel 3, they come, it comes with one in the box for free. That's actually where mine came from, uh, the ones that we're, we're using to review today. Um, and uh, Tanushri, you're here because very soon after I got the phone and tried out the headphones for like a day or two, um, I decided that I didn't really want them, I didn't really need them. And we can get into that a little bit more as we review them. Um, but uh, yeah, so then I handed them off to you because I knew that you know, you use headphones a lot and um, things break and you need backup pairs and stuff. So there we go. Um, so tanushri has been using these headphones a lot longer than I have because uh, I got I got them back in December or something and then I gave them to you. And uh, it's June now, so you've had like a good half year with them. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's kind of let's kind of break down. Uh, all the different aspects of these things. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the durability and losability, uh, which together, you know, determine how long you're likely to have these headphones. So, Tanushri, tell me, like, in the six months that you've had them, have you had any trouble keeping track of them? Have they, like, frayed at all? What's the story there? Um, I haven't had any trouble keeping track of them, um... Uh, but it, uh, this morning I tried plugging the headphones in and it wasn't working, and uh, I didn't know what was up. So, and I my phone wasn't charging with the regular charger that I was using either. So hmm. that was uh, a little weird. Um, and so then I tried again later on today and then it worked, and my charger started to work again as well. So. so, yeah, I guess that there's, like, some risk with the whole, like, USB-C approach, you know, because, like, a, a, a headphone jack, you know, is just analog. So, like, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it's broken, right? It's not really reliant on, like, the software layer, you know, keeping track of it the same way that, like, a USB port is. Um so the the cord that it's got there, this is like a kind of a thicker cord with kind of a rubberized finish, right? Um, I I really like this because it like you, you really can't bend the cable to like a super extreme angle, you know. You can't like fold it in half, which means that like the rubber is protecting the the um, the copper inside really well. Um, also, the fact that it's a um, a corded headphone, right, means that, like, it's pretty easy to keep track of this thing by just, like, you know, if, if you take out the headphones, 
you can just drape them down you know you can have it like sticking out of your your sweatshirt that you're wearing or whatever right and and they're not going anywhere mm-hmm. when you're done using them like you can just like wrap them around your hand a bunch of times and then like you know slip them in your pocket yeah, yeah. so um that thicker cord i guess also probably does that tangle up a whole lot or is it not really it uh every once in a while when i don't bother to like wind it up It'll, like, tangle up a bit, but it's an easy, like, untangle. So, yeah. Good. Next, let's talk about the fit of the headphones. So, when you stick them in your ears, like, how pleasant is that? Um, How easy is it to, like, get them into the right spot and, um, yeah, all that kind of stuff? Well, uh, I'd say it's pretty easy to get them into, like, a comfortable fitting position. Um... Uh, the only thing that I'd say is like like the hard plastics is somewhat a little uncomfortable um, some of the time, and then all of a sudden my ear starts to hurt because it's hard plastic and it's not something like squishy or whatever. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's a good fitting. I you know, like how you can adjust like the I don't know what you would call that. Yeah, like what we're talking about here is the like. Google kind of went with a sort of a wingtip design um, where they've got this like loop that kind of sticks out above the earbud itself. Um, and the like the cord itself, uh, you know, kind of comes up through the headphone, becomes that loop above the earbud, and then comes back down to connect to the earbud itself, right? And so you can adjust the size of that loop. So that's kind of nice. Um, and it and it's supposed to kind of keep the earbud in place the way that like a wingtip would. Um, that was actually one of the reasons that I very very quickly decided that I was going to give it to you was because like I couldn't really get it to be a good size to like be comfortable in my ears. It was always kind of like uncomfortably pressing upwards against like the the my outer ear and was always like really uncomfortable um and yeah like you said the the hard plastic always kind of feels bad in there so yeah i was i i couldn't get it to like fit well uh and i was not happy with that (laughs) next up sound quality so obviously you're not going to use these headphones if they sound like crap so uh how is that going it's going pretty well i think the sound quality could be a little bit better so you're not, like, blasting your ears with music. But I think what would be nice if it had, like, canceling out, like, sound. So that was another thing that I didn't really like about these headphones is that, like, yeah, they, they don't isolate you from the sounds outside. Um, and that's something that I've noticed is kind of, like, weird about, about headphones that come with phones or that come with, like, an iPod or whatever, right? They tend to all just be, like... Nah, we're not going to isolate you at all. You're going to hear all the sounds around you, and then you're also going to have to hear the music, right? So you're going to have to crank it up way high. Um, And if you like that kind of thing, then, like, okay, I guess this is fine. But, like, I prefer definitely having, like, basically just earplugs in my ears that also play music, right? So so aside from that, like, is, uh, like, have you noticed, are they, like, missing any, like... Um, is the bass, you know, good? Is it, does the do the voices sound tinny or anything? Like, um, yeah, the 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 actual quality of the sounds. How does that sound? Everything sounds like really good. It's just I don't like cranking it up, so I don't want to like go deaf. Do you know? Does this thing have a microphone? Have you used it like to make phone calls or anything? Okay, cool. Um, I assume. So that was nodding for yes <laughs> here on this audio podcast. Um, I assume that the microphone is just like in there where the buttons are. Probably, probably yeah. yeah. Um, did it, without uh, other than like actually making a recording, I suppose I could do a recording with that. Um, eh, let's take this out. So instead of just talking about the sound quality of this microphone um we'll give you an idea of what that is just by letting you listen to the microphone on these headphones okay so this is what my voice sounds like uh being recorded by the microphone in the headphones plugged into my phone i've just got one earbud in 
and the microphone's just kind of dangling next to my next to my mouth. How far down does it go? I can't even tell. Yeah, it's actually it's like right next to my mouth, isn't it? So that's pretty good placement. Um, yeah, so we'll find out what it sounds like when I'm editing this. So last off, let's talk about um, some miscellaneous little thoughts. Um, one thing that I noticed like during my brief time with these is that I really like the button design on this this uh, like you know it's just an inline um, controls. Um, initially, I almost thought that it just had like the play pause button in the middle and didn't have volume control and I was like, that's too bad. but then I ended up squeezing, the edges of this and it's you know it's not marked anywhere on there that it, that yeah. that's volume up or volume down mm -hmm. but it's you know they're it's, it's the volume up and volume down yeah yeah they click that it's a really satisfying click yeah. too yeah um and it's kind of you know a a it makes this look and feel like a premium product but i do think that it's it's kind of unfortunate that it's not communicated anywhere on the device that like oh yeah these are actually buttons so we're de <laughs> they're definitely like emphasizing aesthetics over like the usability of this product oh well womp womp so the fact that these things come in white by default um what does that make you think of immediately that these can get very dirty easily because and they'll look disgusting after a while. That's a good point. Also, what I was thinking about is like, I don't know, it makes it feel like they should be coming with like an iPod Touch yeah. instead of like, you know, with, with a Pixel. Especially since I bought the black Pixel, right? Instead of the white Pixel. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it would have made sense for them for the color of the earbuds to match as well. But um, it looks like they only sell these in white. So I guess we've kind of moved past the whole like white headphones are only made by Apple thing. So yeah, there you have it. The Google USB-C earbuds. Um, yeah, how, like where do these fall in the world? Um, I, I don't think that they really make sense as a product for anybody to buy because like, for one thing, you know, they're a little bit uncomfortable, right? Mm -hmm. They don't sound that great. They don't sound awful, but they also don't isolate, you know? But then also the fact that, like, they cost $30, right? Mm -hmm. And they use USB-C. So you can only use them with phones that have... USB-C. Yeah, that have a USB-C port or a laptop that has a USB-C port. Or I guess sometimes you can find desktops that have USB-C ports nowadays as well. So you could use it with, you know, any of those, but not everything has those, right? You're gonna see far, far more uh, devices that have headphone jacks, and even, even some devices that don't have headphone jacks don't necessarily have USB-C, right? Mm -hmm. The iPhones, they still use lightning, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, this is this is a headphone that you're never, ever going to be able to use with, like, every device that you encounter. I think that people would be way better served by just, like, having some normal headphones, headphones yeah, with a headphone jack, right? And then have a USB-C to headphone jack adapter. Because, like, my favorite pair of wired headphones the uh, Panasonic Ergo Fits, those cost like 10 bucks, 12 bucks, whatever. The USB-C to headphone jack adapter, that costs 10 bucks, right? You know, so now you're that's more versatile. I also like the headphones better for the Ergo Fits. So like, yeah, I, I cannot recommend the Pixel earbuds for anybody. I don't think that they're really a product that anybody should buy. Um, and yeah, like it, it is kind of like, it does make the Pixel 3 feel a little bit premium that they put headphones in the box with it. But also that just means that like now there's a pair of headphones that I didn't, that I don't want, that I don't use, you know, and I've given to my sibling to just like have as a backup. Also, it's really funny that like you're using these USB-C earbuds occasionally when you have the Pixel 1, which 
also has a headphone jack. So like, there's no reason for you personally, you specifically, to be using a USB-C <laughs> pair of headphones. Uh, what can you do, right? <laughs> So thanks for joining us for this episode of Second Opinion, everybody. Uh, I have been your host, Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck. Tanushree, where can people find you online? You won't find me online. (laughs) An enigma, a mystery. Second Opinion Reviews is released under a Creative Commons attribution license, so feel free to use any part of this episode as long as you uh, link back to the original page, which again is thenexus.tv slash SO68. If you have any thoughts about this episode, you want to discuss it with other listeners, you can do so on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash thenexustv. And if you are willing and able to support us financially as we continue to make tech-focused podcasts, you can uh, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash thenexustv. Until next time, have a good one. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from From the the Technological technological Convergence. Convergence. Technology is ever evolving. It touches every part of our lives, both influencing and being influenced by society. I'm Ian Arbuck, and I know it's hard to stay on top of everything you need to know to live in this digital world. That's why every month on the Extra Dimension, we explore a different aspect of the technological convergence. Find it on our website, thenexus.tv, or by searching for The Extra Dimension in your favorite podcast player.